Well, I killed the Keurig, but it seems I left a few questions about all of this business unanswered, so I dug these two out of my trash heap to kill them some more. Will I be teaching you how to make any cocktails today? Probably not. So if that's all you want is Greg talking cocktails, get out of here. You want Greg waxing about wasteful pieces of plastic that don't need to exist, gumming up the works that can't be recycled, and just entropy, pure solidified human entropy that creeps out of So a little while back, I did an episode taking a look at these two machines and look, I was, I was disappointed. Then a few days, I mean like literally just a few days after that episode aired, aired, do things air, released on YouTube, went live, dropped, that's what you gotta say. Then a few days after that episode dropped, Keurig told everybody that they would be refunding their money and no longer selling the drink works. And while it's very fun and also terrifying to think that maybe I did that and maybe I did. I have seen lots of comments of people online talking about how like the Keurig buyers had had multiple full unit replacements, three, four of them inside of a year of buying it. I think they were just all breaking down terribly and Keurig didn't want to spend the money to keep replacing them. So I think that that's really what it was. I don't think my thing had anything to do with it. Maybe, maybe I have power I don't know. Cosmic power. Bartesian though, they're still available. And apparently, if you mention my negative review in their social media channels, they're gonna call me an overage hipster who doesn't know what he's talking about. I assure you, I'm an overage nerd, not a hipster. But also, you may wanna ask yourselves, if your target consumer is the opposite of overaged, who exactly are you selling your drink robot to? Just something to think about for your legal department, maybe. I don't know. Honestly, it's not a concern. It seems like 350 bucks. Kids are not buying this stupid thing. Anyway, when we did that review, actually the comments in the video still have a lot of questions that I had failed to answer when I did that. And I'm not like a tech reviewer. I'm not a gadget guy on the show. So it makes sense that I missed all that stuff. But uh, today I thought we could get to the bottom of that stuff. I don't want these things around anymore. I'll tear them apart. We'll look inside their bellies and then I'll chuck them in the garbage. So those questions that you guys were looking for me to answer on these, boil down to a few things. The first one, Keurig. Is this just a Juicero? Um, Juicero, in case you missed that, that was like some tech bro scam heist of venture capital that involved a machine that was gonna make you fresh fruit and vegetable juices for your busy day to day between jogging and yoga and walking your impossibly manicured oversized dog in your mid-century modern house that overlooks a canyon. But I'm just imagining what would the promo film for that look like? That's what it would be. Like low saturation, early morning, like fog still hanging in the low with a voice that says something like, who has time to juice these greens themselves? You know, you need the Juicero to really help you meet your goals and exceed your expectations. You're not the kind of person who waits for second best. You need a Juicero. Something like that. That's probably what that would sound like. Well, it turns out that the Juicero juiced nothing, did nothing. It was packages of uh, juice concentrate that went into a machine that squeezed out the concentrate and added water to it. That's all the machine did. It was junk. And the reason that comes up here is because the pods for this machine actually contain alcohol. So maybe this is just a Juicero. All it does is that. I actually think that there's a lot going on in here and I'll be bummed out if that's the case. It doesn't really matter. It's just out of curiosity's sake. Um, we'll get to that one later. Let's start with the Bartesian questions. Does the Bartesian have separate hose lines? That was something we really concerned ourselves with. The Bartesian, if you recall, you've got the five, four, I'm sorry, uh, glass jars that hold alcohol. It sucks up alcohol of your choosing and feeds it through this head. And there's a pod in there that helps it make a cocktail and a cocktail comes out here. Well, there's four ports, but there's five bottles. And this one is shared, it's gin or rum. And it'll invariably tell you, you had to put the gin in, you gotta put the rum in. So the question I always had was, yeah, you know, we assume that there's four lines going up in here to keep these things separate. But was there a fifth line that this one switches to when you switch the bottle somehow? That's the question there. Because if there's not, then there's 12 to 18 inches of gin in all of your rum drinks and 12 to 18 inches of rum in all of your gin drinks, which is weird. The other part of that question was, why would you make gin and rum the swap and not gin and vodka? Gin and vodka, basically harmless. You know, like you're just gonna kind of water down a drink that you didn't want gin in and you're just gonna excite a drink that you didn't want vodka in or 
Swap that. Reverse it. Oh, that was right. Well, anyway, generally speaking, what is happening inside of these machines? Um, is there anything that they do well? Do they do anything? With that said, let's start with the Artesian. I've already unplugged the power so that we won't be un electrocuted. I'm gonna start now by removing the water reservoir. Looks like there's six screws back here. Uh, let's just take those out with my handy dandy Christmas present my father-in-law gave me one year. I get a lot of screwdrivers from that guy. Not complaining, always need more. Okay. All right, so we got this back plate off. There we go. Oh, Jesus. Meredith, there's not four hoses. There's not five hoses in here. There is one hose. Is that right? There's just one hose that comes up from the bottom here, and there's a pump here, and that feeds into the drink head. So you're getting all your liquor in every single drink that you make. I think so. I want to see underneath. I'm going to open up the actual bottom of this thing now. Meredith! Uh, Greg! You want to drink some wine? Yeah. I got it. It's wine from Bright Cellars. It just came in the mail. Let's open her up and see what's inside. How do you normally shop for wine? Feel like a like a fool. Just you like feel like a fool. Picking just things off the shelf. Drift on the wind. Well, let me tell you about Bright Cellars, the sponsor of this episode. And let me just say, thank you, Bright Cellars, for sponsoring this episode. Your patronage is deeply appreciated. How do you like the wine? How do you like it? I think you should. How do you like your wine? You want to try one of these with me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's quite a nightcap. I'm coming in. Come on up for a glass of wine, Meredith. That certainly is wine that I will drink. I Ooh, like that. That's really good. <laughs> it's really good. Back to the hole. You know, Meredith, see how we both like this wine? It's because we have similar tastes. And I have filled out the seven question quiz that they have on their website that they use to gather your taste preferences and they deliver these wines to me, uh, which they guarantee that I'm going to like. And then you tell them what you think of them, which further hones it. I also love these little cards. I do. I like little cards just generally. I really like the way that these present their info, that it tells you what the profile is, the ABV, where it came from. I don't know. It makes me feel like I know something about wine. And I like the feeling of feeling like I know something about wine. For a limited time only, you're gonna get 50% off your first six bottle box of uh, wine for a total of only $55, including shipping. Do you think that kind of a deal grows on trees? It does not. Bright Cellars is the monthly wine club that's gonna match you with wine that you will love using their patented wine computer. Uh, which is a lot like the back computer from the 60s, I assume. I assume it's punch card based. Get started by taking the quiz uh, to find your personalized wine matches. Use the link below and also in the pinned comment. I thank you for letting me interrupt the episode. Uh, now, back to your regularly scheduled how to drink. So we're looking underneath here and we've got our four booze receptacles and our one water receptacle here. This is weird. Like they're all cross connected in through this, I don't know, I guess manifold is the right word for that. I'm not really sure. And then they pass through some kind of an electronic check valve or counter, maybe that's a counter valve. Okay, cool. So this is a flow sensor. I can see it printed on the board here. And then we have a level sensor, which presumably, yeah, this goes back to the reservoir to detect water. And then this powers the pump. Nothing else is pump. So that means there's only one pump. So these are solenoids. Okay, okay. So the way this works is that there's one pump in the column underneath here. This pump is the only pump. And what does it draw from? Whichever solenoid is open. So you've got a solenoid here, 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 and then this one, which goes to the water. What the hell is this one? Alcohol one, alcohol two, alcohol three, four, air and water. So this lets it suck air into the system. Why would it need to do that? I'm not sure. Well, I guess there's vacuum issues. That makes sense. One thing I'm noticing though is like these lines, and this has not been used recently, is that this section of hose here between this join and the air hose still had water in it from months ago and it was gross and moldy. These sections of hose are holding on to miscolored water, booze, liquid, something from after drawing the last cocktail we made on it, which was just a few minutes ago. Do you think if you ran it through a rinse cycle, it would, I mean, that one's holding water, so that right. would still happen, but do you think the air blows through it? I guess it could. Think about it, right? Only suction is happening here. So if you open up the air valve and you close all the other valves, the air is only gonna go this way. It's gonna take the shortest route to where the suction is happening. But if you open up this 
valve and all the other ones are closed, the flow that's going to take is the most direct route there. It's not going to cross anything else. What you don't realize is that the whiskey can easily be contaminated by the gin and the rum because they share a short route together. The vodka can easily be contaminated by the water and the tequila. So that's crazy. And I'm just wondering if Bartesian saw this, if they'd be like, well, that's user error because we make it clear that you're supposed to rinse after every drink or something. Do they? I have no I have They don't make it clear. It doesn't say that on the screen. And then in addition to that, we have all this water is up here in the column. And you can see it moving and that sucks. My assessment here is that this is worse than I previously believed. I thought that there would be four separate hoses here that were combining at the drink head. But in fact, there's one hose here that connects to five ports plus air and they're all combining down here and being shared up here. Which means if you're making multiple different drinks on this thing, you are cross contaminating your flavors like crazy. In addition to that, I gotta say, the stuff that's in these pods, which is like the flavorant, we've tasted it. I'm gonna do it again today. It is insane. It just tastes like melted candy. And so like, I think that every drink the Bartesian makes, probably based on what's in these pods, could just be vodka. All you need to really do is add ethanol to it because they flavor the living hell out of this stuff anyway. It should just be built around that. It should be built around a reservoir of like Everclear or something or just like good vodka that it then dilutes and just doles out and it wouldn't be a pain in the ass. You wouldn't have to have four different things that you, you know, work with all the time. This is for show really to convince you that this is a cooler and better product than it is. And in reality, you are wasting money on the machine and you are wasting money on the alcohol that you're putting into it by trying to like, I'm feeding it good premium booze. No, you're ruining that stuff. And what else is the benefit? Unless like, you know, you're gonna convince yourself that it's good because you're using the better stuff with it. It's a clever magic trick. It feels like I am seeing behind the curtain from a David Copperfield show. We have a little whiskey here. Let's run something through it and just see what comes through this line. Here is the whiskey. Let's put a little extra. Oh, oh, I hate that too. It leaks like crazy every time you take this stuff out. It's kind of rage inducing. We put some whiskey in here, some cider drink, whiskey drink, lager drink, get knocked down, get back up again. All right, we're gonna do a whiskey one. Let's go with an old fashioned. This will be disgusting. Put this guy here. We've got our water in the pod. We'll put our glass here. This. Okay, so there's a needle there that stabs, a stabber. So when I put this in here, it's pierced. And uh, I'll show you in a minute, there's another needle on top. Next, next. Okay, here it goes. Let's see it sucking up alcohol here. There's a lot of flow running. Look, it can't get suction. This stuff's just staying down here. It's also like, it has to be mixing the whiskey with water as it goes through because- It is, yeah. Yeah, it did not look the same color. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, here we have the, it's not very good. It's very, very, very sweet. So there's your used pod. Oh, there you go. Ah. oh see how much alcohol comes out of there? That's insane. <laughs> That's so bad. That really should not happen. I'm sorry. God, this is a piece of shit. It's such a piece of shit. And like the anger, the indignation with which they defend themselves when you tell them that you made a shitty product. The gall, the audacity. There's the audacity of it all. So I want to, this is what I wanted to show you guys. So when we turn this over, you can see what's in here. You've got this little uh, barcode reader and that tells it what drink to make. It's leaking like a sieve right now. And then this little guy punctures the top of the pod and it injects everything that this is being, it's drawing up, you know, the water and the spirit up through it and pushes it through the pod. Look at how every single one of these hoses after running a drink through it is full of booze. And there's like other stuff in here too. There are particulates, there's like mold, there is gunk in here. And this is the air inlet hose. So this section here is where it gulps in air, okay? It's wet, so stuff is flowing the wrong way in there, sitting in there, getting gross, and then coming up when it gulps air into the drink at some point. You know, stuff can move in there, this is open, this is unscreened, right? And this is sitting on your counter, filled with booze, syrupy, you know what's gonna live in there? Ants. You're gonna eat ants. There's no way to stop them. It's not built to do that. And there's no way to backflow through there because this doesn't go to a reservoir. This goes open into all the electronics. So if you flush water through this line somehow, you would ruin it. The whole thing will be soaking wet and destroyed. This is a masterclass in garbage.
That's what this is. And that's just the machinery of it, right? Because the other thing you're reliant on is these. You're reliant on the quality of these drinks. And like, here's an example. Let's take something we all know and love. A margarita. What's not in here? Your Cointreau or your Curacao and your tequila, right? That's the only parts that should be missing here. So what should be in here? Lime juice. Maybe some sugar. Lime juice. Maybe a drop of salt, maybe some sugar. Here's one thing to keep in mind. Every single one of these pods has exactly the same amount of liquid in it. So they are coming up with something to add to each and every single one of these drinks to fill this pod. It's not drawing a different amount from the pod because everything passes through the pod on the way to the drink. So I'm just gonna punch a hole literally in the top of this and I'm going to suck a little of this out. It's gonna be gross. It's hyper sweet citric acid. Boy, that reminds me of like, squeeze it's. Do you remember the squeeze it's the plastic bottle with the you squeeze it and I they would feed them to me at the key club at the Wyatt club after school because I had to go there because my parents didn't want me to come home that's what that tastes like the squeeze it's yeah it's just citric acid and sugar and water now, here's an interesting question this thing makes a two ounce margarita allegedly the intent is to use all of this and that the only things missing are tequila and some kind of Cointreau but they won't put Cointreau in it they're only pulling tequila. Oh, you're right. That's so they, it. So they've probably added some sort of orange flavoring. Yeah, they're, 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 that's it. true. You're, ugh, ugh. And there's a few drops in there, but I got to tell you, every single time I pull one of these pods out of the machine, there's a few drops left in it. So let's just throw two ounces of tequila in. Of course, I shouldn't add Cointreau because there's no Cointreau machine here. Okay, one cube. So I'm just going to crack my ice in here. Obviously, it's not the right glass, but it's fine. I bet the extent that they workshop these cocktails they did them in a vacuum like this and then said got the spec for you boss put it in the machine a shook too by the way it's a bunch of RA it's a more lively cocktail it's got all this aeration going on and froth middling margarita at best it's really one note it's very very just tart and tequila it's not overly sweet this way though it's funny I think that you do a better job with these pods than the machine does with these pods if you just use them yourself here try it it still has some like really off notes in it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, but it's. It's not a bad. It's not a good than margarita. The lukewarm thing that comes out of here, and I understand you're supposed to put ice in it, but like. It doesn't get that cold. Yeah, really. Yeah, I really haven't brought up the fact that like, sure, you could fill this reservoir with ice, but it's nothing like shaking. It's not. The only thing I want to point out again is that this hose is full of Betnet's tequila. Let's find out. Hold this sucker apart. worse that's tequila whiskey and water all together that's fucking gross and that has to go into your drink that's the next thing that's going through the next pod is that oh oh that's gross oh jesus christ come on i got your motor here yeah i got some kind of this, this plasticky thing let's see if there's any more secrets in it bad oh shit that smells toxic what the... it smells like uh, fish something about the way this plastic was made smells or maybe it's the lubricants on these gears I hate that smell so much all right get this thing out of my sight I'm done with this guy Jesus Christ well that's one robot down after this we're getting into the Keurig you're up next all right here we go now, this is the Keurig Drinkworks it's a dead product. It doesn't really matter. To be perfectly honest though, I liked a lot of its design better than the other one because it had this front side water tank. I wanna make sure I take it apart in a way that we can still see it operate. There's a back panel I can remove. We can start there. I have to be careful with this one because it does have a CO2 bottle in it and it is under pressure. Basically, I'm gonna to try to skeletonize this, see if it does anything. All right, see like this is an entirely different product. I'm actually kind of afraid to go too far on this. I want to see what this is. There's a huge sealed unit here and it's a refrigerated unit and it's cracked. I mean, it's an insulated thing, I should say, but it's got a crack in the plastic. Right here, we have a fan and like a copper manifold. Some kind of a chilling refrigeration device, I think. It sucks air in and out. And then over here, 
we've got our CO2 bottle. You know, I feel vindicated because I strongly suspected that this one was doing something. And you know, if you recall, this made better drinks consistently across the board. The one that's now off the market made the better drinks than the Bartesian. And I thought the Bartesian was gonna be of the better machine. Let's see if I can get that off. Oh, 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 oh. Careful now, sir. <gasps> oh, it's signed by everybody who made it. Oh man, these guys believed in this thing. <laughs> I feel bad now. All of these signatures of the people who made it are etched into the top of this thing. That's crazy. I think that this was like a thing that was being developed by somebody else and then Keurig bought it and I guess now they've killed the project. Uh, I was trying to be shitty about this, but now I kind of feel like bad. There we go. Okay, cool. We got the top off now. So I've got my digital display here. So this is a much more complicated board as you can see and I do have to be very careful here. This appears to be the heart of their ingenuity, much heavier lines. These are reinforced braided lines. I don't know that I'm gonna be able to actually deduce how all of this works. I think I've brought this up before. This is where the CO2 bottle attaches to it. We can see that's the CO2 line there and it runs right into this solenoid, which basically just decides pressure on, pressure off and down into this chamber. And so I'm thinking that what this does is the drink pod probably fully sucked in. I wish I had a clear top here so I could see what the pod was doing when it was running. I wonder if there's a way we can trick it into thinking it's closed. That would be cool. But I have a funny feeling that it draws its pod into this insulated chamber to chill it. I mean, there's a refrigeration unit right here and I think it is being chilled and carbonated potentially when it's necessary and mixed in here, and then it comes back in. Where does this hose go? Does this go into the refrigerator? There's a lot of wires and sensors there. It goes back into the bottom of the mixing box. It goes to another manifold, which I think connects to the water reservoir here. Um, we have two guys that come, this comes off once the top and then splits. And the one goes down here. I can't believe that there's all of this to make water go from there to there. Maybe make it a little colder. And carbonate it. Maybe. It may fail at that, but that is the effort. All right, I'm gonna fill up the reservoir. Yeah, that's good. Just put you right in the water there. That's... You know, we should probably just put the lid on that. Yeah. <laughs> and that is how Greg ended up in the hospital. Oh no, we broke this. So a couple of things. Um, I think I screwed this thing up pretty bad. It's kind of not really working, unfortunately. But uh, then something sounded like it shorted a little bit and the camera shut off. So I think we've screwed it up pretty bad. If this is a Juicero, it's a hell of a complicated Juicero. I honestly, I think this machine was a really honest attempt at doing something here. There's way too much going on in here. And I'm kind of hesitant to take it apart any further just because I don't know what's under pressure at this point and what's not. It's funny, now it won't even turn on. Can I ask like a really complicated machine to do what? Fair point. What does this huge apparatus do? Take the contents of a Cosmo pod, which we know has all of our alcohol in it. And I think all this machine would do in this case is open the pod. Oh, why isn't anything coming out? Don't hurt yourself. There we go. Ooh, smells off. Yeah, like in the case of a Cosmo, I think it is fair to say that all it's gonna do is open that pod I think it will put it in here and aerate it. I think that's for real. You know what? I think we will open up the mixing chamber in a moment because I want to see what's actually in there. Oh, it's so pink. Okay, so one of the things I'm not taking into account here is that like, this is not going to be the same thing at all because it has to have a measure of water added and I don't know what the measure is. The machine knows, but like that is definitely way too pink. They would have added a lot of actual water to that in addition to coldness. Holy shit. This might take a few minutes, but I want to take the CO2 out. <laughs> Didn't count on that. Okay, so we just dumped a bunch of CO2 into the room. Is that bad? Should we leave? No, no, I think it's fine. It's not like that much CO2. So I wanted to depressurize the system so that I can safely start disassembling this component here which I think is a chamber that chills and mixes drinks. I guess there's no harm in just cutting these hoses. We're not gonna be able to make it work ever again anyway, unfortunately. Okay, let's go crazy. Yes. 
then now we can really see what's going on there. So I'm starting to see why these have so many recalls. If that's not just you know a rumor, there's any truth that I mean, look how complicated this machine is. Wow, man, they really did not. Oh, want... water's coming out. Really? Yeah. Where from? I don't know. Why can't I get this open? Oh shit. Every wire is covered with water. Well, let that be a lesson to you before you go mucking around with your Keurig. It's full of water. Also, that water has just been sitting in there for, does it renew? I'm very No, sure. because there's no way that, I mean, we only, we filled this up and it took down a little tiny bit. So yeah, that's been sitting in there this whole time. Well, all the water's out of it now. We may as well fucking keep going. Only one more incision in the patient. And this one might be a bleeder. There we go. And that is the Keurig drink works. That's what it is. Am I bleeding anywhere? What I want to get at now is what's inside here. So this is an insulated pressure vessel. Oh, we got it open. Look at that. Holy fucking shit. This is an insane thing. I can't believe this is how this machine worked. Right here, this is where the CO2 would come in. It would put your cocktail in here, add water to it, and it would CO carbonate it and stuff like that. And in fact, I think as well, it could agitate it significantly to produce aeration. And it's insulated in here and chilled. This is a refrigerated box. It's a little fridge. That's the exchanger for it. Actually, in fact, it probably just fills up with cold water and runs air through this, this chiller on it. Because you see these rods here too? These two rods are sensors. They are attached to electrodes. Like there's a lot of stuff going on here. Look, the results weren't phenomenal. <laughs> but those drinks that the Keurig made were consistently the good ones. They were way better than the Bartesian drinks. I think that now I'm looking at this, yes, I bet that's true, that they got taken off the market because it's a very complicated piece of thingery that needed a lot of maintenance realistically, but nobody was willing to be able to do that. But it's an honest effort. I mean, I give these guys a lot of credit. I think that they signed their names on it because they believed in it. It's a bummer to, it didn't work out for them and that it wasn't better, that it was, that it's a really hard thing to do, to make a machine that can make cocktails. It still sucks, it's super wasteful. These pods are super wasteful. My understanding is that the Drinkworks was developed before Keurig got involved, like it was being developed and then Keurig bought it. And I wonder if there's an earlier version that's not pod based and then that's just the way Keurig was gonna do it. I'm gonna stand by whatever I said in the previous review episode, which was basically that like, I don't know why it exists. I don't know why you need it. It's a lot of money, but if you were gonna buy one, get the Keurig. What was the price difference? They were about equivalent in price. Wow. That's I mean, what I'm saying, yeah. The Bartesian is highway robbery then. Yeah, exactly. If this was like a $1,500, I would feel a lot differently about it. Sure. Be like, you get what you pay for, fine. The one thing I will give Bartesian is like, this whole mess takes a whole lot more resources. You're about like planetary resources? Yeah. Neither of these things are necessary. They're both frivolous piles of junk. I think this was an honest but flawed attempt to deliver a quality product to market that wasn't fleecing the customers. I think that's true. I think that the Bartesian is not that. The Bartesian is a misdirection act done poorly and it makes terrible drinks. And it's gonna give you food poisoning eventually as well. Yeah, that's the other thing too. It's gonna feed you a lot of mold. And you know what? I think that this water that sits in this chamber, it sucked up a whole shitload of water the first time we used it and it never did that again. I bet that this water goes into this chamber and stays in there and never gets touched. It's not part of what goes into your cocktail. This just stays in here and circulates through the chiller to chill your drink. In addition to the chilling that you get from adding ice cubes to that and having it feed in ice water. Because that was a huge amount of water. We found. I felt like it's water broke. It was like, oh, oh no, it's giving birth. Ah, I mean, it was just like, where did all that come from? My God. I don't know what to do with this thing. I'm gonna have to take this to the recycling center or something. Well, that's the show. As you can see, I have ruined all of my toys. Don't normally rip machines apart on the show or whatever I did here. If you like the show and you want more of it, I am on these places socially, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Twitch, and TikTok, I said that again, Patreon, I'm on Patreon as well. And uh, you know, if you wanna see more stuff like this, you're at the wrong channel because I don't normally do tech reviews and tear things apart. But if you want more cocktail stuff, you are at the right channel. Uh, if you want to subscribe, that'd be groovy. I have been making the show for six years and most of these episodes are much more instructive than this and less destructive. Uh, and some of them are appearing for you right now. Maybe you want to check out 
one of these earlier episodes of HGD that I am quite certain you missed. Actually, you should definitely check out the first Man vs. Machine episode when I was doing the cocktails that this thing was making. I just, I, I had questions I wanted answered. I'm glad we tore this apart. This was fun. I hope this was instructive. Okay, that's enough of the show. Bye.